Hey, what's up guys? My name is Samuel Leeds and today is a Sunday and right now I'm getting ready for a big day tomorrow. Going to be doing some big deals, going to be training some people, uh, going to be incredible in Buckinghamshire. But I thought, as it's Sunday evening, it's late. I just had a little bit of time, so I thought, why not answer some of your property investment questions? So last week, I shot a YouTube video, and I've got literally so many people that have commented on the video with questions about property. There's, look at all these, look at all these questions. All these people questioning, asking me questions about property. So I thought, why don't I answer some of my subscribers' questions about property investment? I'll read through, I'll answer some of them, I'll respond to some of your comments. And while I'm doing it, if you've got questions or comments, please do feel free to go ahead and comment. And maybe I'll do another video like this real soon where I can answer your questions. So what we got? Um, okay, so one of my subscribers called Dave. Not Dave the Rapper, Dave T. He said... I still think your videos are fantastic, but, <laughs> but, okay, I'm worried. House prices are currently at an all-time high. Building material costs are going up. Interest rates are likely to be going up. Inflation is going bonkers. Is taking out a big mortgage for a buy-to-let still a good idea? Um, I've got people now messaging me, more people with questions. My phone's going bonkers. Um, Dave T., what I would say to that is, when you're buying a property, you need to make sure that the property is cash flowing positive. If the property is cash flowing positive, and I'm not talking about making 50 quid a month, if you if you buy a house, say for 100,000 pounds, and then you spend 50,000 pounds on it, then you refinance it, and it's making, and you pour your money out, and it's making good profit. Maybe it's making you rent it out room by room. You're making a thousand pounds a month. Even if interest rates go up, they're going to have to go up to like 20% for you to not make any profit at all. Are interest rates going to go up by 20%? Of course not. They can't. I mean, historically, even if you go back to the 70s and 80s, where there are a ridiculous high that people are still scarred about to this day, they're at 15%. So interest rates aren't going to really stop my profit coming if I've got enough cushion. If house prices go up or if they drop, it doesn't matter. I remember buying houses in 2009 and the house prices dropped in value but it didn't matter because I'm still cash flowing positive. So I'm still getting paid to own the house. So you just don't sell it when it drops. And in terms of refurb costs, who cares? Because again, you buy it now and you refurb it. Like uh, when properties are going up and they're going bonkers like they are right now, you can find a reason why not to buy. When properties are going down and they're crashing, you can find a reason why not to buy. But the truth is, it's always a good time to buy if the properties are cash flowing positive, because ultimately, bricks and mortar will always hold its value better than money in the bank. So if you own a house, there's a limited amount of land in the world. So if you own a house, someone's always going to need to live there. If it's cash flow positive, it's probably a good property. So that's generally my thoughts. Okay, all right, go again. Keenan says, I have around £150,000 to start in property. My question is, do I look for a buy refurbish refinance to buy and refurb with what I have available? Or do I put the £150,000 down as the 30% deposit on a bridging deal for a bigger and better investment? What I would do is I'd go for something bigger and better. If I was you and I'm starting out, I'd probably start small. Because when you start small, there's less risk and you learn and you go bigger and bigger as you grow. So I'd probably start small. All right, next. If you've got, if you've got questions for me, go ahead, comment the questions below and I'll do my best to answer. Okay, Fishy Nanti says, how about an update on the castle? I assume you're talking about my castle that I bought in 2018, Ripsford House. Uh, update on the castle. So currently we are, um, it's quite boring really. There's nothing really to document what's happening because it's all planning. So at the moment we're, we're trying to get planning permission to to work, we're liaising with the council exactly what we can and what we can't do. So there's no there's no point us continuing doing works without knowing what the, what the um, you know, we've currently got planning permission for, I think it's 12 houses, no, 12 apartments. Uh, and four houses, I believe it is. We're trying to get we're trying to get planning permission to just build a little bit more to make the deal more profitable before we continue. But don't worry, when that happens, I'll be definitely updating when we start um, doing fun stuff and, and doing the refurb. I'll one hundred percent be documenting that. But planning permission on big projects like that, especially historical buildings, it can take years to happen. So, um, damn, I've I've learned patience, and uh, and, and I, I appreciate the question. All right, next, Mister S. 
I've been on your Q&A Q since 2019. This is what this is. This is a Q&A right now. You ask the questions, I answer them. But I still haven't started in property. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? My main concern is how do I find deals and how do I know they'll work? How do I know I'm getting a good price on a deal? How do I know it will rent out? Or what kind of deals to stay away from? I think my main question is how do I analyze a deal perfectly? First thing is, there's no such thing as perfect. Done is the new perfect. Your problem is probably that you're getting into paralysis by analysis. You're thinking so much that you're overthinking it, but you do need some basic training. Um, so, so, I mean, look, all the questions you've asked me, I answer in great detail on the Property Investors Crash Course. The Property Investors Crash Course is a free training program. I run it for free. I've been running it for free for about five years now. So I'd recommend getting down to that program. You can do it online where there's a small, a small cost or you can do it in person, which is free. I love it when people do it in person. Um, how do you know if it's a good price? Look at what's selling in the street. Work out what the comparables are and then you can work out what the value is. How do you know what it's going to rent for? Look at open rent and see what's renting in the street. Speak to some letting agents. Like, it's just about knowing how to crunch your numbers and do your proper research. You've got to become like a detective before you buy a house. Um, but you'll get there, man. Just take action. Come on down and meet me at the Property Investors Crash Course. I'll leave a link in the description. Come and meet me on some training. All right, next. Me, me, me alone says, I've been following your channel for quite a while now. I always leave a like and I'm subscribed. You know how much I appreciate that? You're amazing. You've got loads of impersonators and scammers claiming they can help. Tell me about it. I'm sorry about that. I have a conversation saved for just the real Samuel Leeds. I know there is nothing you can do about it. I'm warning everyone about these scammers that claim they are Samuel Leeds. I've been a victim. I'm super sorry that you got caught up in someone pretending to be me. If you are talking with someone that's pretending to be me, I will pretty much never like put my WhatsApp number out on groups and then start chatting with people. And I'll never, ever, ever then be saying, hey, transfer me some Bitcoin and it can double overnight. Like anything like that is not me. If you're ever unsure, hit me up on social media. If you're, if you're having a conversation and you want to check it, verify it's me, hit me up on social media. I'm sorry that you got scammed by someone pretending to be me. It's a shame that people use my, my brand and my reputation where I've helped thousands of people in property and have genuine products and services. I buy properties, I do business with people um, in, in a very ethical, legitimate way. And people use my brand and my reputation to pretend to be me to try and scam people. That sucks and I'm sorry to hear it, but just make sure you always, in the same way as you gotta do your due diligence when you buy a property, you gotta do due diligence when you do business with somebody as well. So if you're doing business with anybody, with me or with someone that looks like me or is pretending to be me or anybody, do your research, be a detective before you ever hand money to anybody. That's my advice. All right, Richard Harrington. Sammy, I'm at a crossroads. I've got three properties through a limited company, one in a personal name, and I want to scale up. I'm thinking of another four to five properties in the next 18 months. Do I go limited company route or personal name route or a combination of both? What do you do? Firstly, Richard, I would suggest that you speak to an accountant. I'm not a tax advisor, but it's probably going to be best for you to structure this in a company. It's going to be more tax efficient. It's going to mean that Section 24 doesn't apply to you because you're a company, so you're going to be able to claim mortgage payments back as tax deductible. Um, I'd probably say a company, but speak to an accountant. I can hear my kids downstairs. I don't know if you can hear that on the video. If you can, I apologize. I'm just gonna take two more questions and then I'm gonna wrap the video up. Don't forget, comment your questions below. Comment them below. I'll do my best to answer your, comment, your, your comments and your questions in next week's video. Vita! Vita, you're gonna be a property millionaire, man. I sense it in my bones and in my heart. I hope your question's good enough to say that. Hi, Samuel. What would you recommend for someone trying to buy a house that has absolutely terrible credit? Are there other ways to get a mortgage or simply owning a property without paying its full value price? If you've got bad credit, first thing I try and do is sort your credit out. It might be quicker than you think. I mean, it depends how you define terrible. If you've got county court judgments against you and you've been made bankrupt recently, even then, after six years, you can completely clean your credit up and get it great again. If you've just got bad credit because maybe you missed some mobile phone payments, you're late on your mortgage payments, Maybe you've got bad credit because you're not on the electoral roll. You've moved house a lot recently. You can go on websites such as like there's memberships like Experian and Credit Karma. They'll tell you what your credit is. And if it's bad or if it's not great, they'll tell you how to fix it. I'd probably check that out. Um, if your credit's super bad, it's shot and you can't buy a property right now, maybe think about packaging properties and selling them to other people. Maybe think about controlling properties. Maybe think about having a property business that doesn't enable you to 
have good credit where you can still make money through property without actually owning property. Do that for the time being, make some cash, meanwhile clean your credit up, and then boom, shaka, in a year or two, you stop buying and building an empire, you become a property millionaire. I've got a good feeling about you, my friend. Right, last question. Um, Himanshu says, do you use a deal sourcer? I don't really use deal sourcers much. Um, my advice, because I'm, I've got full-time deal sources that work for me. However, if you're using a deal sourcer, just make sure that you know how to find deals yourself first, because that way no one can pull the wool over your eyes. You're paying them for their time for, to, so that you don't have the inconvenience of having to go out and view houses in the rain, and you're paying them for their time and for them bringing you deals, not because you're like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, and you just pay people to do it for you, because sometimes the blind can lead the blind, and people can pull the wool over your eyes. So get trained, get educated, and then find deals yourself. By all means, pay a deal sourcer, but make sure you know what you're doing first. Remember, the pro property investment is the second best investment in the world, in my in my opinion. The best investment in the world, I believe, is not cryptocurrency, is not business. The best investment in the world is yourself. So grow, get trained, get educated, learn, watch videos like this on YouTube, podcasts, attend seminars, get educated, and then slowly start investing in property, build your portfolio, and then hopefully become financially free in the next 12 months. But remember, patience is a virtue and everybody wants to get rich quick. Sometimes you just have to get rich slow. But if you're going to work hard anyway, you might as well get rich. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe. Hit subscribe down below. Check out some free training I got. If you want to come and meet me in person, check out some training down below. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Peace out.